This is Fee, Dumb in the Rough. And if you can't tell by the title, I am doing my next whip and chat uh, for my uh, cruise to the uh, North Europe. Thank you for joining. If you're new to this channel, please um, leave me a comment, say hello. Nearly did the wrong colour then. Um, I have, this channel is um, slightly different, whereby I do whipping chats, I do different crafts, uh, I do well, diamond painting, and a resin worker, and a little bit of other stuff thrown in as well. Um, if you're, uh, yeah, just dropping by, thanks for dropping by. Uh, hit the subscribe button and the bell for you notified next time I do an upload because it won't always be just these weapon chats like this. But I will say there's a couple of different, there's, I've got two series of travel so far. I'm working on my third of uh, travel for, oh, turn that light on, of uh, travel journeys and uh, one was Egypt, one was South Africa. South Africa is where I got this picture from. I am working on a custom. Um, and this one is about my Northern Europe cruise. And if you actually do are a crafter that diamond paints or knits, crochets or anything where you just need someone to listen to, I tend to walk along quite a bit. And by the sound of it, people enjoy it. <laughs> but anyway, on to my next little chat for my Europe cruise, which was absolutely amazing. This one was, so I think when I left you guys, I had uh, basically, I was on the ship and on our way. Had a couple of questions in relation to that. Did we have streamers? flying and, and like you see uh, um, others other cruises that happen you know where there's people on the dock and streamers and there's a party and all of this I will say no <laughs> there was a lot of loud music playing as a, a as a goodbye you know we're off off to or the start of the cruise up on the uh, deck where the swimming pool was but if you actually have a look at what the weather's like in September in Northern Europe, mm, bathers and partying out on the deck just didn't go. <laughs> but I did go up there. Uh, we'll pop some photos of around the ship uh, now. Uh, just bear with me while I actually to go through them so I can have a look at them you will see that there is a date on these count these so you can tell what time these were taken now we're not all taken on the same day but on the morning or on the afternoon of you'll see where I've taken pictures around the ship um, with the cabaret band or whatever they are that play in the main area so just enjoy those pictures uh, the bar, the open side to the restaurants, and then my cabin. Um, it was a fair size bed. It was a comfy bed. <laughs> uh, my luggage had been, as you can see, my luggage was there. I didn't see that. Actually, no, that was just my carry-on. That wasn't my suitcase. I was still waiting for my suitcase at that point. So I was fresh in the room. I think I've got some video footage of the room. I think I videoed like the bathroom or something like that. But if I've got video footage of the room, I will pop it here. My room. <sighs> huge bed, huge bed. Oof. 
So on the when we did depart, I will show you the what it was like. When we were departing, this is what the top decks were like where the pool area were. So you for the swimming pools. I don't even think the spas were underway at that point. Spas were the only thing heated in that on that top on those decks when it comes to the swimming pools. Um, but yeah there was a few people around. So um, you can actually see where the crowd had actually increased um, and we were still in Copenhagen port. Um, and oh yeah, no, then we go for the meal, have the meal up on deck. But I do know that it was just um, a sail away party just doesn't do, doesn't really go off like a rocket in cold weather. <laughs> or not in this cruise ship anyway. Um, there wasn't many that many people there that were young on that cruise, so uh, it wasn't a party party boat, which is good, which are the cruises that I like. Um, audio. The people in the spa. We had the um. What of the spas were running. We had the the little tiny water slides in there. Um, but yet again, yeah, I don't think anybody used them for the whole thing. Got some photos the next day uh, where I've just walked around. In the morning when it's all quiet <laughs> uh, yeah six o'clock in the morning you know you go on holidays and you tend to like to sleep in on holidays but when you go away on holidays there's no such thing as sleeping in there's afternoon naps but not sleeping in especially not on a cruise ship or when you're on a tour you don't get to sleep in okay so I'll go back through and show you some other photos, just put some photos on here. Um, one of my favourite things on the cruise ship was this bag. Uh, I don't think they had the ability to do laundry. Uh, but, so they had these bags. I think twice on the cruise, they give you a little note to say, Every, anything you can fit into this bag will wash for free uh, which is pretty cool however I uh, I made opportunity that I was prepared to pay for it to be done not just waiting for their wash days <laughs> because their wash days were obviously always very busy and you didn't get the washing back very soon whereas if you did it on a normal day um, it was back earlier so yeah I'm on vacation or refuse to do laundry bag. I like that bag. Really did like that bag. So close up of my bed on the second night. Okay, so on the second day, the second day was actually just cruising. That's all it was. Uh, it was a, we traveled, we cruised from Copenhagen to Bergen so it's one of the long legs of the cruise but it's good when you get on a cruise and the first day so you get on the cruise at night go to sleep the first day is just relaxing and just getting out of all the jet lag mode and all of that and you know just getting your, your bearings on in the ship and all of that which is really great first day just yeah because you know you've just flown and traveled or whatever and that day is good to have there on the every night i had towel animals 
Every night there was a different towel animal. And I will say, these were gorgeous. Uh, the first, my first one was actually this crab. So, to the, like, like this is the turn, well, hang on, was this turn, this isn't turn down. Yeah, this is turn down service. So what you get is your towel animal. You get your daily update for what happens for the next day. Uh, events that's going on through the ship what time it's expected to dock and the estimation of temperature or, you know what it's going to be like weather wise all of that where you're heading lots of information in those books my first cruise I didn't realize how much information there is in them but this one I took more notice of and yeah it tells you when things are happening hmm okay so day two was very quiet then the when we did and i need to go to my other folder we got to bergen and it was just it was before it was before seven o'clock i will put footage here some of the pitch some of the footage I took was slow motion um, to get really good effects um, but I put some footage here of what it was like when we were cruising in Bergen um, Bergen was cool it was we didn't spend much time in Bergen itself Bergen we actually went I did a full day tour so when uh, you go on these tours, you have your colour coding and you basically got to go sit in the theatre area and wait for your number to be called and so your tour group called so you can go and join them and then get off the ship. They were very organised, very organised. It was good. Um, it was interesting watching people that didn't understand what was going on and uh, watch them struggle with things with understanding of why they were, you know, instead some went to where you get off the ship and there was, yeah, messy, first day messy for getting off a ship. But I did a, okay. Oh, just realized I've got a window open that I shouldn't have open. Okay. So, what I did in this crew uh, on this day was the shore excursion was Norway in a nutshell. Uh, do I have a so what it says the, the description the Norway in a nutshell trip takes you through some Norway's most beautiful fjord scenery. You will experience the scenic Bergen Railway, the breathtaking Flom Rail Flom Railway, the Erlands Ford, the narrow and dynamic UNESCO protected near fraud and the steep hairpin bends of still or oh, please Orchid if you or, or, Orchid if you were there <laughs> you know what I'm trying to pronounce STA Stolheimsklevia I think well, probably massacred that sorry guys for those of you that uh, know that um, yeah, so it was, it was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day. Um, and I'll take you through the pictures of it. So, well, I should say beautiful day, but it was also rainy. Um, some of the point, point starts, some of the days were, the part of the day was rainy and yeah. What do you expect? It's September. <laughs> yeah. 
So, the I've got video footage of when we go through it. I'll, I'll just pop them in. If I've got footage of it, I'll show you. Um, but basically, we got off the ship, piled into our buses, and we had a lady, and I can't remember her name, and I don't take pictures of people, so I didn't have a picture of her. Um, but she was really good, she was good. Um, I will say, and I don't mean to be general on this, but I will say I had sat behind a lady, an American lady that was very loud, yeah, you guys call it Aussies loud. I think she she was louder than what I am. Uh, she wore a red. <laughs> this is one thing that annoyed me because I did a couple of tours while I was on with her. Is that she was on? She wore a red jacket. What that means when you are in a bus taking pictures out the window, what you tend to see is a lot of the red jacket. If you do a, a tour. And hang on, looking for my next color. Sorry, guys. If you're doing a tour and, and you're going to be in a bus, don't wear red. Even for yourself, you could be struggling to get some big, good pictures. But yeah, so did the tour, and oh, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Um, I will show you before we get to the tour what it was like coming into the port. So there were some dark pictures here and then you'll see uh, the rain so when we're in the bus and uh, the rain starts and the rain starts at a good point it's the rain's going when we are actually in the bus traveling i don't think we had much in the way of rain when we were out of the bus it was really good just if you actually take a look at this picture where we're just we're just driving and took a picture of our house and you can see where the rain is just coming down the, on the window so it was not easy to take pictures out of the windows when it was wet uh, so yeah but it was uh, it was met we went past the little markets there and you can see they've got their marquees out and all that the little bit of protection I don't think they would have gotten much So we drove, drove for a while around some beautiful scenery, beautiful, beautiful. I mean, I'm still going, I'm still just remembering how green and lush everything is and how clean everything is. Um, and by what makes me say that is because <clears throat> with being in Australia, we get that lushness, but if you live in certain parts of the country, there is, it's dry, it's dusty. It's still amazing scenery, but it's dry and dusty. And yeah, it was absolutely amazing seeing how lush and green everything is um, where we went to. So we rode, drove around on this bus around all these fjords um, I'll put some pictures in. Obviously, there'll be pictures going right the way through this. One of the places we stopped at was Voss. Voss uh, Bank, the church, and this lake. And it was, oh, it was beautiful. <laughs> Listen to me, I'm just going to carry on and say it was beautiful right throughout. You know, It was an amazing, amazing place to see. Um, I will say that years later I discovered that Voss actually bottled water so we have we get water here in bottles and they are Voss it's Voss water um, and can understand for how clean everything looks it's just a beautiful place so yeah that was a side note anyway so the chalk talk we saw the church the bank um, and just the lake then drove along to a waterfall. Now, there's supposed to be, what waterfall was that? Um, 
Did it say the ward? Uh, no, it doesn't actually say. For me, I can't remember the names of things. But beautiful waterfall, and I know I have footage of this one, so I'll pop it in here. Of um, the waterfall in slow motion. I love all footage of waterfalls in slow motion, so here we go. Quite a big waterfall. Quite a big waterfall. Gosh. Um, so yeah, there's some pictures and some video footage there of the waterfall. Just beautiful. And then we're talking and they're saying about um she's talking about quite a few things. And I can remember her saying about where there's um no trees and I'll sorry, put put the picture here so there's just sections where it just looks like well actually when, once you've under, once you've been told what it is basically you can see where a, an avalanche of some sort has happened in the snow and what it does is leaves the scar which is what you can see here in the distance um, it leaves a scar on the earth for where the avalanche went because it's not just the snow that goes and you don't realize that it's not just you know like you hear about avalanches well for me because the only snow i've seen is at, at snow at a distance um, but avalanches you just think they're only done it going just the snow but no it takes out what's underneath it too which is cool but not cool <laughs> if you know what i mean and I'll just pop some pictures. We, oh, my favourite picture, my favourite picture. I have edited it so you can't see the date. It is one that, as a diamond painting, it would be stunning, but it would have to be huge 
if I did this as a diamond painting, I'd be looking at it being least one and a half meters long to get the best aspect of it. Uh, I, 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 otherwise it would be too pixelated with all the detail in it. But it was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Now this is where now this this is where we stopped and had lunch. The restaurant here it was all. Um, it was a cold lunch, and it was all serve yourself of you know buffet. Very interesting foods that, yeah. Because it was cold, it was like that wasn't appropriate for for, for me. I got with the cold and the rain, you know, you, I, I like a nice little meal or a soup or something like that. But uh, not to be. Hang on, next letter. Eight, two, three. No. Should be there. Should be nine three nine is that, and then three three seven one. Um, so yeah, it was a cold lunch, but when we were all piling back into the bus to head on to the next part of our little tour, they, we all piled on with, with the exception of one lady, and that was the lady with the red jacket. Uh, yep. So her friend who was with her turned around and said, oh, she's in the bathrooms, I'll go and get her. So 15 minutes later, still no sign of either ladies. Um, and then you suddenly see this lady in the red jacket toddling back, um, taking her time. When you're on something like this, you get told you need to be at the bus at this time. Um, taking her absolute time. And then she gets to the bus and it's like, well, where's your friend? Oh, I didn't see her. She, she wasn't there. <laughs> so the lady that had gone to find a friend hadn't returned. So we're waiting for the, yeah, so we're waiting for her. And the lady in the red coat says, I'll go and find her. And they're to a to a person turned around and goes no you wait here we'll find her <laughs> and um, what they did there was just contact the staff and just put a little calling out for her um, for the staff to keep an eye out for her and yeah she wandered back and came back and she's like oh, I couldn't find her I was like yeah you kept looking but she was already back that's why you couldn't find her mm. yeah and how do I know that this conversation happened? Because although it was at the front of the bus, they were loud enough that it travelled all the way to the back where I was sitting, which was the seat behind where they actually ended up. Yeah, it's the red coat. Um, so yeah, we travelled from there. We went um, some sort of very windy, windy roads. Um, hang on, L. Excuse me. Eight four two. Yeah, um, yeah. We went and hit some very very windy roads, uh, and then we got to the bottom of the fjord, and we were at um, Flam. Okay. Got a couple of pictures of a nice tight hairpin bend that we travelled down. Um, and actually you will see the red jacket I will make sure I put that in um, and the waterfalls we went round so yeah we got to I think it was yeah it was Flam was where the this train we, we copped on this little train and it it was a yeah, very old looking train very old looking train but we stopped there and the Flamsbana was the, the route we took, which 
it's, yeah, interesting. So this is all before I got involved in trains, and I, I appreciate this more now than I did before. But a little bit on that, I'll show you the where we sat, but a little bit on that is the how it travels. So the, the flam is at two metres above the sea level and it travels to Medal. Medal, I think it's, sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong, which is 866 metres above a sea level. So the train is only, only the train rail line only is only 20 kilometres long. But what it is, is the fact that it has to go up this incline that is pretty significant, pretty significant. Trains work, have to, have to work hard to get up, but trains brakes work hard when they come down. Um, that was a really, really cool, cool train ride. Um, some beautiful pictures of the area, the rivers that are going through. Um, I did get, I think it was this one, some picture where we went through an area of another train. Are we finding this? I'm trying to get to it so I can tell you about it. You can actually see some of the windy roads in the area. So we got two um, waterfall. So this is a waterfall that had a free fall of 93 metres or for, for the miles it was uh, imperial, that's 305 feet. Just a free fall of water. I've put some video footage in of that here um, and you can watch that. I did get it in slow motion, so there's no sound, but oh my gosh, the roar from that waterfall was big, very big. Um, yeah. So we actually got off the train. There's a little platform where you can get off and take pictures so it was really good it wasn't like we stayed in the train we actually got off to take these pictures um, one of the things that frustrates me most about some when you do this is it's worse now than it used to be but you get people doing selfies so they're taking a picture of the waterfall in the background and making sure that you are in the foreground to I don't know what it is what it is why I mean I suppose it's the importance of saying well I really was here it's not just some standard picture I don't know um, but people but when they do that it makes it very hard for other people to take pictures I get very frustrated with that I mean you see the pictures that I take if I've got people that stand in front of stuff 
get a selfie, um, it just stops everybody else getting pictures of a clear picture. So I did have a bit of a struggle with um, taking pictures there. And then further along, there was just these little cottages that were just beautiful. But one cottage caught my eye. It was gorgeous. There's, I think they were oars. They looked like they were oars on the wall. And then higher up was a pitch bush bike. And it was so cool. But all I could think is, how did they get it up there? Why is that up there? Um, yeah. Don't know if anybody that travels that has seen these that know why they put up something like that so high up. Is it just for decoration? Or is it because, I don't know, the water goes that high? I don't know that they need the oars. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I really did like that picture. And yeah, it's just a beautiful, beautiful thing to see. So we travelled through quite a fair way um, and then we started heading back and there just, I, I was still just, even to this day, so this cruise was seven, eight years ago and I can still remember what it felt like travelling through there. which. Um, it had an impact on me, definitely had an impact on me. Oh, pardon me. Uh, yeah. Can you see there was... <laughs> oh, yeah. There's another photo in there where I get a reflection of the lady, her red jacket and her camera. So I don't know how many photos she got of out her window that were any good because I know out my window taking photos, I was getting pictures of her. But here we go, this is her taking a picture and there's me taking a picture out the window and basically you just, you just see her. <laughs> um, heading back into port, one of the things, um, that she, which was really a couple of things that were really interesting of the, the woman that was our tour guide. She turns around, I know at one stage she turned around and she said, you know, we as, as um, tourist guides, we're advised not to talk about um, politics, um, rah, rah, rah. And then next thing you know, she starts talking about politics and the different parties and, you know, I, I just remember her sort of saying, oh, we're not supposed to talk about it. And then suddenly, bang, she talks about it um, in more detail than she probably should. So as a tour guide, they, you know, they, they tell you a bit about how politics are, you know, democracy or whatever, and who's currently uh, in power. But then you're not supposed to be praising them for one thing and then critical for one, another thing and putting your personal opinion in about who is currently in power, which is what this lady did. Which is, yeah, uh, we're not supposed to tell you, talk to, we, we, we are advised not to talk to you about politics, but I'll let you know that, right, right, right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Tis what it is. <laughs> Um, so there was, what else was it, um, uh, now, there was, I discovered in Bergen and the next place we went to, Ellisund, um, they pronounce the word wood differently. Um, in Bergen, it was wood. <laughs> so it was a really, more like a V than a W for wood. And um, yeah, obviously Bergen was wooed. <laughs> oh, Alison, sorry, was wooed. <laughs> um, yeah. 
difference in areas, just the dialects change a little bit, which is, no, that's all over the world, that. Um, oops, just saw I missed one. Got my last colour. We've gotten back to just about back at port and she turns around and she said, she t mentioned something about having um, Ikea and point they've stopped them they actually drove by and said how proud they are to have an Ikea store and it's like yeah okay <laughs> so yeah they I took a photo as we were driving past Ikea um, at that point I think Australia had Ikea on the east coast but not on the west coast and I lived on the west coast so Ikea didn't really mean much to me Oh no, there this is, there's another one. Sorry, just trying to make sure I get all of these. Okay, so then from there, we got back to the ship um, and it was miserable. Um, a couple of pictures of the Norwegian star when we got there. Um, yeah, it was just miserable, miserable back, we're back at the ship. No, it doesn't want to lose any of those. Okay. Let's go another one. Let's go. That's the O, where's the E? Hang on. E934. Um... So we've gotten back to the ship now. One of the things about cruising in cold climates, one of the things that is absolutely amazing, hang on a sec, can I have a bit of coffee? One of the things that is amazing is when you get back on the ship, so everything goes through security screening as you get on. And once you get to the other end of the security screening, there's this lovely, lovely little spot where they, I don't really need one of them, where they give you a hot or a warm hand towel. Very nice to do. A warm hand towel and a hot chocolate. So way to end the day. So, yep, yeah, drink your, wipe your hands and your face down and gives you a little bit of warmth and the hot chocolate gives you even more warmth. Um, I head back to my room and uh, believe it or not I put my bathers on. So I put my bathers on and I went to the spa area so if you remember in the last episode I booked a book for the spa where I could to have it 24-7 go whenever I want. So I put my bathers on and I grabbed my towel and I, did I grab a towel? No, yeah, I did. I had, I had the ship towel with me um, and headed off there. And yeah, that is the way to end a day where you've been chilled to your bones, where it's cold. So I've gone in there, I've hopped in the spa, so the heated spa and it's warmed me up. And then I've gone and sat in the chairs that are at the very back behind glass and it's all heated and we sailed out of port and I was sitting there in absolute warmth and comfort. That's W eight nine eight. Yep. Um, yeah. That is how I finished every day after going ashore. Um, it was fantastic, fantastic. It's like I, last cruise I did before that was, I used to just go and stand on deck and watch it depart. Uh, but at least this way, doing it in the spa area, you watch depart and it's, you're in warmth. Yeah, can't say much more about it except how great it was. Um, so yeah, nice and warm as we're leaving. I had, so that, I went and had a bit of a nap. 
after that. And then I'll go up about eight o'clock at night and had dinner, came back to my room and discovered that my bed had been made and turned down. <laughs> Six on three. That's the one thing about a cruise ship. You go and lie down and you just suddenly discover, and then you go out and you come back and you discover that, yeah, <laughs> bed's made. Love it, love it, love it. Because the cabin guys are, the cabin crew are always there. They see you come in and out, but they do, you don't realise that they're noticing it. But then when you go out, yep, next thing you know, when you come back, your room's cleaned up and everything's made. Can't beat that service on a cruise ship. Can't beat it. Okay, so that was... Bergen. That night I had um, so the 21st I'm just making sure I get the right picture so on the 21st when I came back from when I, when I come back to go to bed, um, I had my second tail animal and he, he actually had used my glasses. How cool is this? So there's a couple of pictures of, of the tail animal on that night. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Yes, that's me in the, uh, if you look at the back near the pillows, that's me in the mirror. <laughs> uh, all I had one was a towel. <laughs> I didn't learn how to hide myself in photos at that point. Uh, mind this, oops, there's not many places you can hide yourself. So yeah, that was the towel for that one. The nights were pretty uneventful. Um, there is, so this, I, I, I pop this picture in here, I'll leave it for a little while. I'll read through it for you. Um, but this is what it said on the day, so you know what to expect. Um, day four, Sunday, September the 22nd. We're arriving at eight o'clock and all aboard at 4.30. So there's your times that you need to be back on the ship. So if you were doing your own thing, you, that was that was how you knew, that was when they were departing. When, when we, you need to be on board so they can depart on time. That's all right. Um, so, Did we get there? Is there the temperature? Yeah, they were saying the forecast would, was about 13 degrees or 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, hang on, I want number two. That's seven, one, five, two, three, oh, six, four. Um, but yeah, so that one is another time change. I told to set you change your clocks back an hour. Um, and there we go. It says Norwegian Stable Dock in Ellisund at Pier Stornes Gang. Kindly refrain from please ceding to the gangways until clearance from local officials. Everything will be announced on the radio. So yeah that was that's what you get told of a day and then you have your own tours so that was before i went out oh i did do it i took a picture of um what my tour was so that was land of the trolls land of the trolls was cool love this one um Alisund was an absolute favorite for me hang on Still got that clear plastic on that corner piece. I just need to make sure it's down. There we go. 
Um, I love this tool. So Land of the Trolls. Um, now, I don't know, did I have footage? Hang on, I'll see if I took footage of coming in, no video footage of coming into port, just the pictures. And there is also a map which shows where we went um, when we came in. We went from Alisund and around to the left and around. So that's the trip that was, that was one of the things that he did with this uh, tour guide did that was really good was give us that so we knew exactly what path we were doing. And he actually did. He said to us, take a picture so you can go back and have a look at the picture and you know where, you, where you're going or where you've been. Which made absolute sense. So you can see where we had our lunch, the troll wall, the troll path. Um, the, there's a gorge we went to um, and the Rose Church. Okay, so yeah, there we go. Um, just a heap of pictures. Now one of the things he turned around and pointed out was these white things. And he turns around and he goes, do you know what that is? And somebody's turned around and said, oh, it's hay all bailed up. And he goes, no. He goes, they're troll eggs. <laughs> That's troll eggs. <laughs> um, but he turns around and says, yes, it is. But it, we call them, they get called, nicknamed troll eggs. So these, the hay is actually all bailed up in, in these white um, bags or hessian, I don't know, whatever it is. But, yeah, so we saw troll eggs everywhere we went. <clears throat> um, yeah, it was... I love this one. This guy was so, this tour guide was so charismatic. You know, you know, so long, I went so long ago, but I still remember him and how he was. Uh, the stories he told were brilliant and in, very, very, very engaging. With the stories that he told us, one of them was all about the trolls and the difference between a female troll and a male troll. And he turns around and he says, you know, the trolls that you see, the troll dolls that you see, they are all male trolls. That's not what female trolls look like. Female trolls are, they look like people, um, look like ladies, but they are so, so beautiful and they have magic spells whereby they will actually trap, their magic will trap a man and um, men will go dis missing for, for days because they've been trapped by this, these beautiful trolls. Um, yeah. And he just told the story, but it was absolutely amazing. And then towards the, after the end of it, he turned around and he said, you know, there's a lot of men that go missing and come back to say they've visited, that the trolls took them. Generally, generally the starting point for when the troll takes them is when they've been to a pub or a bar or they've been out um, socialising. And these trolls, they just take them and disappear with them and they have their way with them and then they send them back home. <laughs> so you will always find that most of the times when men go missing, it is because the trolls have taken them. <laughs> it was so good. He was so good. So good. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think Alison was... For, for me, Alison was the most picturesque place that we went to. Absolutely beautiful. I loved it. The, the, the rivers, 
that we travelled through, there was a waterfall um, that we actually walked over top of with a glass floor. Um, then we got to um, we got to the not the troll wall. So the tr well, what was it called? Um, It was a troll wall. So it was when you go on this this road, there is a section that has such major windy bends. Oh, and it was very noticeable. So if you actually have a look at the pictures here, you'll see um, we actually stop and we at this vantage point um, and we go and have a look. And oh, you look at it going, oh heck, I wouldn't want to be travelling down that. And then knowing that we're going to be on a big bus doing these hairpin burnt turns. Uh, when you watch the how people drive up and down, and there's not much room. Our driver was pretty good. My driver, obviously, most drivers in that area are pretty good. Uh, they were saying though that he did send around and say so I've taken some photos from this beautiful vantage point um, with this waterfall but he turned around and he was saying to he turned around and said to us you know the troll the troll wall so that path gets closed from this date from this time to this time you know he said this period and he turns around and said, this is the last lot of tours that will be coming through here because as soon, so we're the last tour buses that will be going through here because it gets closed in two days or something. It was getting closed in two days or something like that because when it starts, weather gets so bad, um, it's dangerous to be on the road, so dangerous for buses to be on the road. I think he did say it does close to general vehicles, but buses first, you know, tour buses first, um, and then it's closed, it is closed for winter for the snows because you just can't travel through it. You just can't do it. And there is some footage. Um, yeah, some video footage. You will hear a lady calling out saying, oh, it's not the boss, it's not the boss. This road is a piece of engineering feat. As you can see, it's been carved on one side and the rocks from the left is used on the right hand side to support the road. By the way, this road is one of the very few roads that's closed in the winter time. This year it was opened on the 20th of May and it's going to be closed very soon in about 15 20 days time it was built in 1936 you'll see quite a lot of uh, rock slides it's not only cleaning the road but they have to take away the rocks that fall down during the winter time Left 
Ay, mi joven. Mm. We'd already started down the path, so there was no chance of that bus turning around. And so we're all waiting, just stopped on the bus, thinking, now, how are they going to manage this? And then she turns around and calls her, oh, no, it's okay, I found it, it was in my bag. So our bus had actually stopped. And I think the guy and the driver were discussing what to do about getting this lady her her bag, her, her phone. Um, but with that being said, when they stop the bus, nothing else can get past you. So they caused everybody else to be sit back and behind. Yeah. Not good enough. Or you miss your wallet or your spectacles. You don't know where they are. You can always blame it on the trolls. Because in Norway we say that troll has been here. So we have a scapegoat in the trolls. So whatever you don't like, you can blame it on the trolls. It's a good good way of uh, yes finding a guilty something guilty or somebody guilty. It's the trolls. Look at the mountains, see if you can see any trolls that has been frozen. Use your imagination, even force your imagination. Now we'll try to make a very short stop on the next bridge down the road and you'll have a good look at the uh, waterfall on the right hand side there is 350 meters drop on that water and you'll be able to take a photograph and then we'll see if we can make another stop when we get down to the valley uh, only for a, for maybe five minutes just to take photographs I don't want to look at it. Oh, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> One thing you need more than anything else driving on uh, in Norway is patience and also respect to the other traffic. And of course, in the winter time, you have to use the right kind of winter tires and drive slowly, of course. Now there are 11 hairpin bends here and vehicles above 15 meters are not allowed to drive on this road because the diameter of the hairpins uh, are not large enough so everything that's above 15 meters gets stuck here and it's a catastrophe. You have to, you have to uh, get the wreckers so that they can lift the vehicle and put it onto the road again. Don't worry, there's about an inch clearance on each side. <laughs> and you can see how small the bus on the left is.
This is worse than Haleakala. <laughs> and this is worse than uh, North Carolina. <laughs> yes, this beautiful bridge is in front of us and we are going to stop there just for a while. So get your cameras ready, please. Yes, this beautiful. Okay. Equal sign. Equal sign. So we've gone along. I think I've got some footage of us going down. Um, and the other side of things, there was just this cow, these cows walking around as well. 3772. But yeah, I'll share with you obviously some pictures of as we're going down and I think I got some video footage. I'm not quite sure. We did stop and get out to take some pictures of where we could look, take pictures of the up. <laughs> so where we'd been, you can actually see this path going up. Um, yeah, it's quite, quite fascinating. Um, is all fascinating when you travel everything's fascinating isn't it when you're seeing something that you don't normally see um that's all the ink was there <coughs> so the next stop was this beautiful little um area where we had our lunch and so i've uh, gone and dished up lunch and i've taken a picture of it purely because I knew that Nathan would be envious of what was on this dish. The, basically it was fish, but it was all cold. So it, yeah, um, it was all, it was all cold food, but it was, it was nice, it, it was nice. But yeah, I took a photo of it. I didn't take many pictures of food, but I did take a picture of that one yeah so that i could uh, share it with nathan so he could see that you know that some of the food that you get and he was actually impressed because he looked at it and goes oh that's this that's that that's that so yeah so where we stopped there was a troll stop and it was called the place was called troll stiggin and this is where we actually got to really have a look at buildings that had the grass roofs which for me, you know, it was like, <laughs> I love those things. It was like, you had to get up there and mow them or use a scythe or something to, to keep them down and keep them well tended. Um, yeah. Let's get that back around. I took some beautiful pictures there. Um, there's one there of the cabins 
and I would so love to turn that into a diamond painting too. This cabin is this cabin pictures are beautiful. Um, photos of just these clouds rolling in, um, and I did get. Hang on, where is it? There's one picture there that I absolutely loved where I did um, a picture just to the leaves, um, just the bit, everything else is blurred, but I focused on the leaves. Uh, just a slightly different picture. Different perspective using a micro, micro shot. So it just focused on that one, getting the detail. Um, yeah, so, it was a beautiful place, Trolls Diggin, it was camping, og. okay guys I'll put the picture up here of that one, pronounce that how you will. <laughs> um. <coughs> Excuse me, um, I just want the ats, where's the at? Where's he at at? Um, 610. Right at the back. So yeah, we had our lunch and we wandered around that area, stretched our legs, which is really good to do. Do I have another at? That was just the one at. Nope, there it is. Right there. Now I want the five. Which is right there. Um, look at that. There's the at. There's another at. So from there, we then went and did a lovely little drive. Um, it was Lake Rastaplas was where we had the lunch, Tolstigan, Lake Rastaplas. Um, just trying to get through some beautiful, there we go, yet again saying it, beautiful scenery. <laughs> loved it, loved it, loved it. Hang on, I just want one V, which is the very last one. Just because it's on the edge there. Come on. There we go. Um, yeah. We then went to Troll Vegan. Um, actually, here we go. There's a picture of, of um, our tour guide. Um, but if this is just this massive rock face and unfortunately if you look up on that picture we can't see the top <laughs> um, yeah could not see the top um, hang on I've got quite a few pictures where I just just getting past some pictures but you can see where it was, and you can see where it goes up, but we couldn't see the top. Mm. And he turned around and he said, well, there's a reason for you come back. <laughs> you come back, maybe you'll see it then. Here we go, I found more of those ats now. One there, there's another one here somewhere. There it is. Yeah, you can't see it now, so you'll have to come back, visit Bergen again. And yeah, we just did a lovely drive back to Port. We did, did we stop or did we just take pictures? Now, yeah, we stopped at one place, this house, and he turns around and he said, this is the most photographed house or building in Bergen. Um, apparently that people stop and take pictures. 
So the thing is, though, if we didn't stop, we wouldn't have taken pictures. <laughs> so they, the tour guides actually make it um, one of the reasons why it's photographed so much. Um, yeah. More jeans. There could be more jeans. There they are. Oh, pardon me. Yeah, more jeans. We went past a building. I think it was here. And you can actually see, there we go. You can actually see the musical notes on there. Now, one of the songs that was, one of the musicians, one of the things that was played um, at the Olympics was, what was it called? Walk of the Troll? Something like that. Um, but this was actually that music, that, that music sheet for that up on the wall for everybody to see. Hang up, looking for a nine. Won't be long. 8.40, there we go. Um, so this was King of the Trolls, Dance of the Trolls. Mm. So that was that the music was written onto that wall. Um, then there was something that I took a picture of this with the canals there and the buildings. For me, um, when I looked at this, doing this tour, you know, you see all this, um, you see these pictures of some of the places and going, no, that can't be real. No, that you know that's that that's got to be painted afterwards, you know, to beef up and photo tricks and all of that. And then we actually got to one of the places that I saw, and it was real. <laughs> yeah, and that was this building here that was on the canal. Um, yeah, it, it's just so it's so picturesque, but it it's yeah. Don't know how you can see it but then we got to see some interesting art decor houses and then straight after that we went to the um to the ship okay whoops there's another oh there's another one one there and one there well, you don't put them away while you're still looking. Um, no, that's a G. Which I'll get next. That's the eight. Where's the G? Nine. Hang on. I need to put this directly under the light. That's why. That one there. It's one of the things that I like about Don the Moon Shop having their loose legend. I can actually put it up to my eyes under the light and really see what it is. I love it. it makes it easier than trying to strain and look at the side of the chart side of the um, diamond painting. Um yeah, so back to the back to the ship. Now, while I was on the ship, I took some photos of the shore. Um, and I demonstrated, I got for myself how how good my zoom was on the camera. So if you look at the yellow building, down the bottom and directly above that there's another yellow building and to the left of that is a blue so so you got the pale yellow and a slightly darker yellow not the bright yellow this and then i've actually zoomed in 
and he's actually there having I don't know whether that was a coffee or something like that but yeah I was able to zoom in on him hey, yeah as he was looking out and watching us departing but yeah it was beautiful so that was it for Alisund which was the 22nd so on the 22nd there was no towel animal I didn't take a picture of a towel animal I know there was one but I didn't have a picture oh uh, well um, but yeah that was that night was just I think that night was when I discovered the red line bar or something it was basically meant to be a, a pommy pub um, but um, because I'm not a big drinker <laughs> uh, yeah um, I didn't tend to go to the bars but what I did discover is that in this bar they had a side section where you could get fresh so they had popcorn was popping the whole time and also you put your own the stuff for uh, hot dogs was there so you make your own hot dog discovered that that night um, did I do I don't know what night whether that was Alessand and Bergen. So it was Alessand, yeah. Um, I can't recall whether I went to one of the restaurants or not. Most of the time I ate the buffet, it was just easier. Um, everywhere else was sit when they were sit down, you actually had dining times, and I was not prepared for that. And Yet again, that was we got back to the ship that day and had the a, the enjoyment of a hot towel and face white hot towels for face and hands and a hot chocolate. And I said farewell to Alisund from the back of the ship inside the uh, spa area. <laughs> And I've already forgot what number I want. So yeah, I will leave that there. Um, two days, I think that's enough in one video. And yeah, it's an hour long. I will put video footage in between when I find video footage that relates to the time that I'm talking about. So that's 4.20, yeah. And I'm gonna sit and quietly get this done. So yeah, pop some comments down there. What do you think? What, what, what pictures did you like that I shared? Um, yeah, in this climate, now who'd get is apart from me, I'll, I'll get on a cruise ship if I, once I can get on go on holidays. I want to get on the cruise ship again. Yet I've got Nathan saying you're not getting on a cruise ship ever again. Hmm, we'll see who wins that one. Find out one day, won't we? Um, yeah, thumbs up, thumbs down, comments. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button and the bell so you're notified when I do an upload. And I will say bye for now.